What's going on peeps? Welcome back to the channel. I must say the uh, well overwhelming support you guys have given me from the first episode of the pro show has really humbled me. I must say thank you to all the guys for the likes, the subs, the shares. Really appreciate it. And then again, also massive thanks to Soundcast Studios for allowing us to shoot episode 2 at their beautiful studio. You already know what to do with their socials. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that thing. Follow them, like them. And you know what to do with my thing, of course. Like the thing, share the thing, subscribe to the thing. So without further ado, let's jump on to episode 2. My next guest was written off by many at the beginning of last season. His club was even written off by many, but him and his club exceeded all expectations so much that the club got a top 8 finish. Him himself, in 24 periods, mustered up 11 goals, one man of the match award, one player of the month award, and even yielded one Bafana cap. So without further ado, let's cross over to Soundcast Studios and check out the video. Let's go! Lovely, good to see you man, good to see you, it's going to be an awesome part, I can feel there's going to be bad jokes in this one So, what have you been getting up to since you've been back? Uh, like obviously, my plan was to just relax and just like give the body a break mm -hmm. Because like, you know, this the past season was very tough mm -hmm. in terms of the fixture load Especially towards the back end of the league of And like the games are coming too fast and I think at my tender age, I need all the recovery I can get. 100%. And yeah, basically, I was just at home, chilling and being with the family. Lovely. So, That's lovely, yeah. man. That's lovely. But look, let's talk about the season. Let's get right into it. I want to start at the beginning of the season. Of course, newly promoted Swallows, newly promoted team, um, written off by every man and his dog, basically. Sure. I'll be honest. <laughs> um, did that motivate you? Personally, and did that motivate the team? What effect did that have on the team? And the truth of that type of thing. Like, yeah, it's always it's always a good thing to be the underdogs when so many people are you off. Mm -hmm. And basically, we use that to ignite our fire. Mm -hmm. And with the likes of Coach Coach Brandon, like the tactics and the and the how can I say our philosophy that we built at Swallows, like we wanted to surprise a lot of a lot of teams and a lot of people out there. And to a certain extent, we achieved basically overachieved. overachieved. I think yeah. overachieved, yeah. 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 So, right. but to a certain extent, like we achieved, like to at least make top eight and surprise a few teams. And as you can see on on the the log table, we are the only team that lost twice. Exactly. And it was very difficult for certain certain teams to break us down. Mm -hmm. And back to you, back to the answer to your question, yeah, like. It just ignited our fire. Right, I can see it. It actually worked. Like I must admit, you guys. Like I always say, like people always talk about um, you guys and like what eleven draws that type of thing. I always say, if you're not gonna lose, if you're not gonna win the game, don't lose. Mm -hmm. So come away with the point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, then the new year starts after scoring five goals in December slash January, including a brace and man of the match awarded in Cape Town City, as I mentioned. You secure secure the player of the month. Um, I remember I was in my car driving home from work that day and I heard over the radio and I was like, ah, so again, I called you, but obviously you were busy doing video work, of course. Not the bad way to in the new year. Um, why did you put that success down to? Obviously, the philosophy that we played at Swallow is like, it helped, but it was built around me. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Of course you can. <laughs> of course you yeah, can. It, it, it helped me in, very, in, in, in many ways. And uh, we understood the dynamics of the team, uh, uh, like how, how to move, mm -hmm. who plays what, and you know, yeah. and that baby basically played in in my favor because like, like let me let me take let me make example like the Bulls. Mm -hmm. Jordan wasn't always the best. Okay. Sometimes there was there was there was um, Pippen. Sometimes it was Rodman. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it wasn't all just me shining, yeah. but mm -hmm. more of a collective shine. Of course. And um, you could tell that. Go ahead. Well, I just want to say, uh, I just wanted to chirp in quickly. Uh, what's been the f um, the secret behind your form this season? Uh, th obviously, like I said before, like when people write you off, you mm -hmm. get that desire inside of you to just right. yeah. just go out there and just prove people wrong. Sometimes it can go right. Sometimes it can it can work to your disadvantage. But for me, like that was like really like ah, excellent. Like. 
to ignite my fire. Like, <laughs> like people wrote me off, like saying, "I can't do it anymore." Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And I just mm. wanted to go out there and actually prove people wrong. Shut, 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 shut. Look, um, <laughs> it's interesting that you mentioned that because your fire costed me money actually. <laughs> I remember. You remember, remember. You remember that so allow me <laughs> to tell the story behind this judge that I've actually got. So I um, said to you at the beginning of the season, um, if you score 10 goals, um, I get me a solid jersey with your name on the back of it. Heaven knows what I was thinking. I mean, this man scored like 20 <laughs> plus goals over the past two years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but okay, look, you know, I always make such bets with you guys, just yeah. like as a friendly band, but just to get you guys going, that type of thing. Not you guys need my motivation. Um, um, but again, of course, it's been a magnificent season for you. It's yielded great results, national team call, that type of thing. Of course, you know, there's a rumor flying around, which we'll get onto later. Um, but what I want to ask you is, what are you aiming for next season? Um, to be honest with you, Devin, and Greg, mm. I don't want to, like, put a title on it. Of course. Because basically that limits me I, yeah, yeah. to just achieving that. Only that, I know what you mean. The, the past, the past season, I said I wanted to score 15 goals and I could only get to 11. Mm. Which is I, not bad. Where it's where not bad at all. If I had to put it at 20, I could have maybe fall short of maybe 17. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I get it. So I don't want to limit myself, but obviously, <coughs> I know what to, what needs to be done. I need to put in obviously the hard work and great performances on the pitch. Mm. And don't forget, all soccer players need a little bit of luck. Yeah. Of course, so, of course. But if if I can replicate the season I had of, mm. of, of late, uh, that will be actually a good morale booster first of all, mm. and that will help my team maybe could get some solve with. Excellent, of course, of course, of course. You said uh, uh, I just wanted to get back also onto that uh, point that you brought up earlier. Um, how was the feeling to be back in the national team? Ah. Obviously, it was a good feeling. Like I never thought that would happen again, but I always knew like. If you amongst the top goal scorers, like the chances of you not getting selected is very, very slim. Mm. So I just wanted to actually do well for my team first of all, and then if I get selected, then hold yeah. up. But mm. if I don't, I, at least now I'm, I'm pushing my own race. Mm. Sure. No, of course. I have a question also. Good vibes. What's it like playing with with Percy? <laughs> like. Uh, the Lion of Judas. <laughs> you actually, I actually got that question a lot. Though, yeah. <laughs> but like, it's like playing with so anybody else. It's just like the technical ability is different. Mm. They, the more motivated, and you can see like at training is here just to to mm. do what 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 God placed him with. Mm. You know what I mean? And yeah, basically, he's very humble. He's very educated. Mm. That's one thing I mm. picked up about him. He's very educated. Like when we had to do like. Um, we checked all the previous matches of the qualifiers and we had to look, do like predictions. Everybody had to like say what, what their opinion of like mm. the goals that they conceded and stuff like that. And funny enough, he like actually gave all the answers from like <laughs> yeah. e wow. even like defenders' answers. Like he even challenged them like to, to ask them like, why do you think you went there instead of going? Wow. Like he was, he's very educated. Sure. Wow, mm. sure, that's mad. Now let's come on to the question mm. on everybody's lips about a certain big three club in South Africa. Mm. Everybody's been asking you this. I'm going to ask you this about this big three club. Are you going to score against Sundowns next season? <laughs> yeah, I need to. I need to. I need to get one over them. If you do, I'm so done with you. <laughs> just for bragging rights between me and Al. How glad to hear you, sir. Let's hope. Let's hope I'll take this out. Who is going to bring me against them? <laughs> yeah, he he shields us one off. Is it? Yeah. Um, we play like a um islands versus swallows. Uh. We we see, uh, like the night before we were like talking and going on about the film. I told you, like, Gary, um, sleep early, bro. Uh, <laughs> you're playing as proper people tomorrow. Yeah, we lost one no, and uh, uh, Zaki put a fantastic near post for the PC. It's like he had so much to score around the world. Around the world, it's everything. Yeah, Anfield. Something like that. Oh, it's City against City. You see it one. Yeah, I see that one. Yeah. Oh my, killed us. Oh, okay. Lovely. So, yeah. Bring it right all week. But yeah, all the best, like. Nah, sure. lovely. Sure. Look, um, yeah, let's let's close it off. Um, first and foremost, I rather want to thank you for jumping on. Um, I can say one thing: you are one of the 
Pá, é nem Joana, Joana que eu tenho uma. Joana que eu tenho uma. Há uns pouco dele estão alvos. Ok. Let's go, you know what? We've got 10 more minutes. Speak from the heart. Let's, let's just check. Let's go over 10 more minutes. Tell me firstly, your climatization, that side. When you went there, um, two swallows, obviously, I mean, you've been all over, you've played for Chippa, um, Amazulu, that type of thing. What's the difficulty to adjust on that side? Yeah, in, in the beginning, it obviously, the altitude plays a big part. Mm -hmm. But once you get used to it, like, you should always give yourself maybe like a week, just to, mm -hmm. obviously, here in the coast, we, we, how can I say? We spoiled with wonderful oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> so England is a bit tough, but uh, but I uh, really actually something we like. I don't know it's something to do with the, with the Kenyan runners because mm -hmm. they train in high altitudes. Oh, okay. And, and their body produces more red blood cells, mm -hmm. and obviously the more blood cells you, your body produces, the more oxygen and stamina mm -hmm. you have. So for me, it works in in my favor mm -hmm. because like. They helps you get more fitter, you run much longer, you know. Mm. So obviously that first week is going to be tough, but you just need to push through the, through the tire belt. Mm. I have one more question before, before I know you also have another question. Of course, it's the first time in terms of um, with the COVID, of course, there was no um, fans in the stadium. What is it like playing without crowd in the stadium? Do you think that Swallows benefited at the fact that there was no crowd? Or do you think you guys would have done better if there was crowd in the stadium? Like... I'm not gonna lie to you, Devon. Like certain games, we were lucky there were no crowd, mm. and certain mm. games we were lucky there was was a crowd. Mm. Oh, there wasn't a crowd. Mm. I see what you mean. Yeah. But um, like more or less, like I think for for the big games, if there was fans, mm. like we would have probably like be more energetic mm. and more determined to actually win the match. Okay, and maybe. Like the smaller teams without fans, it was also a bit tough because there was mm -hmm. like no motivation of for course. you to actually win the match. Mm -hmm. So to me, it was almost like a, an official friendly. Okay. Where you play with your name on your name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, my 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 question was for you, Zach. Yeah, I'm nearing the back end of the season. Why um, is it difficult for most strikers near the back end of the season to like say this four or five games left? Why was this um, getting the back end of the season? Why was it so difficult for you to get that last four or five goals? You understand to get to that fifteen or seventeen mark with you. Yeah, um, like let me think of a good way to answer you. Really, um, I think like look, it's plain and simple. We it's twenty twenty one. Teams are also getting smarter. Exactly. Like. They obviously watch clips, video yeah. yeah. uh, yeah, they videos they about us, and uh, like they plan around how yeah. to mm. uh, neutralize me. And like, okay, to a certain extent, okay, maybe my hunger wasn't also there to go to maybe try something different. Mm. And we were also just playing the same system all the time, you know. Mm. And teams started figuring it out, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, that's all I can say. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, look, I think it's a perfect answer because, because, I mean, as a striker, that is what happens. I mean, you... Because teams do figure you out. figure you out. You know, you've played yeah. target man yeah. many a times. And they have video sessions they have, where, they, where they watch they you. And, players. of course, they, they watch the cut of your supply, um, yeah. that type of thing. But, I mean, look, again, like I said, um, you guys had an awesome season. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to get onto the rumor that's the elephant in the room. You're probably tired of that question now. Mm -hmm get on to that all I can say is I know there's gonna come big things for you next year even bigger things um, so uh, you know you got I always got your back um, during the season um, you guys got your back um, so I'd like to wish you all the best for next year take a chill out relax um, again thank you for jumping on you always make the time so I appreciate that highly um, that's all I'd like to say any closing thoughts from you guys no, I just want to say everything of the best for next season, Zex, and uh, continue to make us all proud here in Cape Town. Thanks. <laughs> Good job, brother. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Devin. Thanks, uh, Mr. Garbo. <laughs> Thanks for the encouraging words, and I'll definitely try and fly. I'll see you fly, guy. Sure, uh, thanks.
with your section in tune, release and unleash the perfection. This won't stop till the cops cut blocking with the 12 gauge stock sweeping me off the block. Cause show us wiggles, hot block my show got. Your fatty, your back, guaranteed as the show shot. No dready smash, just the ball head flash. Move your block castles and don't forget we bomb herb stash. Cause these days I pray when take flights. I sleep and smoke all day and work nights. Rock, right on that coast. It's only right I give a toast as the host to all y'all folks. Ha, it's time we hit that for man. It's just we throw down. We bring the sick side, so gather round. Que onda muchacho arriba las manos Gabacho moreno penetra tu barrio Le enseño a rolas de rock back frente Blacks again, esto pa' la gente It's no coincidence, the fuck looks to handle that Insane push your brainstorm, the age in better form And that I mention